But first tonight, in what could be a watershed moment in the US election, this week the New York Post splashed with news of a trove of emails detailing Joe Biden's son's business dealings overseas. The emails reveal Hunter Biden had planned to introduce his father, who was of course then vice president, to an executive at a Ukrainian energy company, Burisma, a company where Hunter served on the board of directors. Publicly, Biden has said he's never spoken to his son about his overseas business dealings. But these emails seem to indicate otherwise. In one message sent by Vadim Pazarsky in April 2015, he wrote, Dear Hunter, thank you for inviting me to DC and giving me an opportunity to meet your father and spend some time together. It's really an honour and pleasure. Another message, also sent by Fadim in May 2014, asks Hunter for, and quote, advice on how you could use your influence to benefit the company. The emails and many more involving uh, a Chinese energy company, which we will get into in the interview with Steve Bannon, were recovered from a laptop that was reportedly dropped off at a repair shop in Delaware in 2019 before it was handed over to the FBI. It was said to be a water-damaged MacBook Pro and the person who dropped it off never paid for the service and he didn't return to retrieve it or a hard drive on which the contents were stored. This is according to the shop owner who said he repeatedly tried to contact the client. He says that on the laptop was a sticker from the Bo Biden Foundation, which was named after Hunter's late brother, the former AG of Delaware. On the hard drive are said to be text messages, videos, 25,000 photographs and 11,500 emails. Some are deeply personal and emotional and others involve drug use and are quite incriminating for the Biden family. The owner of this repair shop in Biden's home state of Delaware says when he didn't hear back from the FBI, he made a copy of the high drive and gave it, and managed to find his way to Trump's lawyer, Rudy Giuliani. Now, in the US, this has been quite a bombshell in the final leg of the presidential campaign, and not just because of the actual contents of the email, but because of the issue of censorship. Twitter has censored the New York Post story, claiming with absolutely no proof that the contents contained hacked material. The tech giant, of course, has allowed the spread of other stories that contain either hacked or illegally obtained material like the president's tax returns or Melania Trump's phone calls or even Julian Assange's many data dumps on WikiLeaks or Snowden's information. In censoring this story from a legitimate media outlet from the New York Post, Twitter is acting against the United States tradition enshrined in the constitution of a free press. It is a deeply dangerous precedent. Now, a crucial player in this whole saga of Hunter Biden's laptop is Trump's former campaign manager and White House chief strategist, Steve Bannon. Bannon was the person who first alerted the New York Post to the existence of this drive in late September. He joined me earlier today to, to discuss this from New York. Steve, thank you so much for your time tonight. The trove of data that's emerged here is extensive. It includes Hunter Biden's text messages, videos, 25,000 photographs, 11,500 emails. When and how did you first hear about this? This was Mayor Rudy Giuliani. Uh, he, he and his lawyer were approached by the uh, store owner after the FBI didn't come back to him. You know, uh, Mayor Giuliani is the president's lawyer. Uh, his lawyer, Bob Costello, is a very famous prosecutor in this area, in the New York City area. The uh, Mac store owner uh, re uh, reached out to Bob Costello since it was abandoned property and gave the hard drive to Rudy. Uh, the mayor uh, got me involved, uh, as you know, Sherry, because of my uh, interest and knowledge of the Chinese Communist Party. The many, many emails, many text messages talk about the fin deep financial uh, relationship and broad financial relationship of uh, the Biden family with the Chinese Communist Party. He brought me in for that, and then I was able to help strategize with him the best distribution and release mechanism about you know how to, how to actually get this information out. So as, as uh, people in Australia know uh, from uh, all the infiltration that the Chinese Communist Party did into the elites in Australia through finance and through the political class, you're seeing the exact same playbook they ran in Australia as they're running in the United States with the Bidens. Joe Biden has lied about this for years, and it's pretty stunning that the information has come off this hard drive. It's really shocked the United States. 
But when you first started going through this, what was your reaction to some of the information and, and how long, when did you first uh, get access to some of these emails? How long did you take going through it all? Through it all. It's probably a couple of months ago that we started, I think Rudy reached out to me in late August, I think it was, to start going through this. Um, and I, I was pretty shocked. I was the head of the Government Accountability uh, Institute. I was the chairman uh, of Peter Schweitzer's group of his investigative reporters. We did Clinton Cash. After Clinton Cash, to keep the team around, uh, we started doing the research on secret empires. That was Peter's next book. And Peter focused on the Chinese Communist Party and its infiltration and financing of the American political class. That's really what started the whole Burisma thing and really started, he found the $1.5 billion uh, in private equity partnership. So when I started going through these, I, what stunned me the most is how broad and deep with other CCP controlled companies, the Bidens are in business, and I mean real business, where they're getting $10 million a year in finder's fees, plus 50% ownership of a joint venture, which is fully financed by a Chinese energy company, they get 50% of the equity, and of that, Joe Biden gets 10% right off the top. So what stunned me when I first started going through the emails is the breadth and depth of the involvement away from the $1.5 billion private equity fund he has already. And it, it was stunning. It was stunning the greed. And when I look back over time, what really got me was how much Joe Biden, Joe Biden's lied about this. I mean, Joe Biden has said, categorically, my family has nothing to do, no financial relationships with China or the Chinese Communist Party. I think what we have here now, because we brought in a number of experts to look at this, we have a massive national security issue uh, with Joe Biden and the people around him. I, I, I don't think Joe Biden today could get a security clearance. So I don't know how in 16 days he's going to stand and run for to be commander in chief of the United States. Just going to the detail of what uh, the emails do show when it comes to the CCP influence on the Biden family. Uh, the New York Post has published emails showing that Hunter Biden pr pursued a lucrative deal, uh, as you mentioned, involving China's largest energy company, uh, the now bankrupt CEFC China Energy Company. And in one email, he said it would be interesting for me and my family, and he discussed remuneration packages. Why is this so significant? Remember, the Biden campaign has not questioned any of the emails here, none of it. So what shocked me the most was that the level of detail in, in the joint venture we're talking about, which is on a company that's already gone bankrupt, this China energy company, which was incredibly uh, controversial, the chairman's missing. He's been taken in by CCP authorities. He's missing. A lot of people say he's dead. The signator, a guy named Patrick Ho, already went to federal prison in the United States, has been extradited to Hong Kong. So what stunned me was the, the open greed of the Bidens. What they asked for was $10 million a year in cash money for introductions, in addition to have a joint venture that the Chinese Communist Party would fully finance and they would get the equity upside of it. So, and this could lead to tens of millions or hundreds of millions of dollars of profit. So it was the brazenness of the Bidens when I went through these emails. Uh, and, you know, Mayor Giuliani, who's seen a lot, remember Mayor Giuliani was the guy that used the RICO statute to put the Wall Street guys in prison. Mike Milken, Ivan Boski. So he's seen financial white collar crime corruption before. I think it's safe to say that he was pretty stunned also. Look, another one of the emails, this was uh, the first to be released by the New York Post, showed that uh, Hunter Biden was trying to organize a dinner for his father, Joe Biden, who was, of course, then vice president, with executives from the Ukrainian energy company Burisma, where he was employed. And uh, at the time, you know, we all know this already, Biden had threatened to withhold $1 billion in aid for Ukraine unless the top prosecutor, Viktor Shokin, was fired. And he was fired. Ukraine uh, officials decided, you know, they made that call. They fired him in order to get the money. At the time, he was investigating Burisma. So, Steve, does this lead to the suggestion, do you think, that Biden may have corruptly used American foreign policy uh, as leverage to enrich his family? I mean, I mean, that's the accusation that's emerged this week. I don't think there's any doubt about it. Remember, if for an American audience, Joe Biden has been adamant on the, on the Burisma in the Ukraine. He did nothing. He'd never talked to his son. He didn't know anything about it. The stunning thing about these emails, and then actually the Biden camp admitting something, this is very important. The thing is that about these emails is that Biden has, has basically said to the American people, I knew nothing about it. Now we actually see with the meeting set up. At first, what they came and, and had the mainstream media spin is that there's nothing in his official records to show this. They've actually copped to the fact of, well, maybe he had a cup of coffee or maybe it was an informal meeting. 
So this is going to be, that sets the predicate that Joe Biden has lied consistently over the last couple of years to the American people. He lied on the debate stage with President Trump. What, what the Fox did, which was very interesting, on that issue, but also on the Chinese, they actually went to the people on the emails and contacted them. What was so stunning is that they reported last night that one of the guys in the email said, absolutely, the meetings happened. This is not off of some Russia intelligence operation. That email's correct, the meeting's correct, and by the way, the 10% of the equity is Joe Biden. So you're starting to see other people come in here and validate this. It's pretty stunning. For the Australian audience, just remember one thing. Joe Biden for years has sat there categorically. My family has not participated in China or has any relationships with anything in China. That's all lies, all discredited. He has said the Burisma thing is all a lie. I don't know anything about it. He stood on a debate stage and spent three minutes fighting with President Trump and said it again. So the predicate's been set. Joe Biden's a liar, a stone cold liar. That, that's what these emails and this other information that's coming out right now show. Look, it is worth reiterating, and I know you just said it, but uh, Hunter Biden's lawyer and Joe Biden's campaign team have not denied the, the legitimacy or the substance of these emails. They have issued no denials at all, no legal threats, nothing. And yet Twitter this week censored the New York Post story. And not only did they censor the story, but they suspended the accounts of people uh, who were sharing the story. This is a legitimate story from a legitimate media outlet. Uh, you know, Steve, does this effectively end the American tradition of a free press, something that is actually in your constitution? I think for every every nation that is a part of the Alliance of Liberty, this is we're in a crisis right now because of social media. Remember, let, let's go back on this. Number one, not only the Biden campaign has not come out and, and refuted any of the emails, not one. People on the email chain has come out and said, those are actual emails. I, I'm, it's to me, and this actually happened, and that's fact, okay? So we know that. In addition, we have a release, but we've talked about it. Hunter Biden's lawyer has come to us both with phone calls and with emails saying, hey, I gotta get the, uh, I've got to get the hard drive back. This is not some Russian intelligence operation. This, they admit it's their, 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 it's their hard drive. So the mainstream media spins this. The issue about social media shutting it down, Twitter and Facebook, and by the way, the New York Post Twitter feed still shut down today. We're, Saturday, we're you know, late Saturday here in New York. Uh, where we're working away putting this thing together for tomorrow and Monday, it's still shut down. That newspaper was founded by Alexander Hamilton back in, the, I think, in the 18th century. It's, one, it's a tabloid, but I think it's the third or fourth biggest paper in the country in a very respected paper as far as the reporting goes. They've shown, and it's owned by Rupert Murdoch, who is, if not the most powerful media mogul in the United States, one of the most powerful, and certainly one of the most powerful in the world. So this is not a war room pandemic. Right, or this is not Sherry Markson. They are coming for the biggest guys world, and they just shut it down, and they're in your face about it. I have said that unless we break social media's hold on this today, over this weekend and early next week, the president's never going to get a fair election. They're they're going to take down everything that says the president wins, or take down everything that says the president's leading. Uh, Jack Dorsey, Zuckerberg, and the guys at Google, to me, the, the the Justice Department should go in and shut it down on Monday. If they don't shut it down, throw them in jail. This is they they are they have taken free these oligarchs in Silicon Valley are out of control. We don't have free speech in this country. They took down the White House press secretary the other day. They went right to the White House and took down the commander in chief of the of the armed forces of the United States because they deemed behind the screen that something was inaccurate. And what they said about being accurate is a stone cold lie. They said it was hack it was hack material. Nobody says hack material. This comes off a hard drive. It's absolutely absurd. The Biden campaign has an argument it's hacked. The lawyer for uh, for Hunter Biden has said it's hacked. We can show you the, in fact, the FBI and the smart people at 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 uh, at, uh, at uh, the New York Post that work for Murdoch have it. It's not hacked. That's that's just a lie. And yet they took it down. This is a crisis because this shows the power they have to basically shut down conversation. Steve, I want to ask you more about the hacking allegations from Twitter in a minute, but I just want to pick you up on something you said there that I haven't heard before and sounded really extraordinary, which is that Hunter Biden's lawyer has contacted you guys uh, to ask for the return of the hard drive. Is that correct? Yeah, we're breaking news here on your show. He actually, in a panic, called the... Because they, Hunter, when he dropped it off, was drunk. There's like two or three of these shops in Wilmington. They called around, and he figured out it might be this guy. 
He called him, and when the guy says, hey, I, you know, I kind of don't remember. I'm going back to my shop. He sent a couple of emails in panic saying, i got to get my hands on this right away. So, no, we, and we haven't released that yet. We're holding that back to make sure that if they walk into the trap, we're just going to drop it on them, right? Because this is just lies. Right now, the mainstream media, here's the beauty. My, my, my training under Andrew Breitbart was put it out, let them lie, and then bang, drop them on the lie. Let them lie some more, drop it again. What you're seeing is a full meltdown by the American elite trying to spin the Russia, the Russia narrative. The Russia look, Russia is a sideshow to a sideshow. As you know, Sherry, having been on our show, and we love you because of all the breaking news you give us out of Australia. The central existential threat to free people throughout the world is the Chinese Communist Party. I don't need to tell Australians how insidious it is. And this is not the Chinese people. They're the most decent, hardworking people on earth. It's the Chinese Communist Party and what they try to do to infiltrate democracies in the West. That's what you're seeing here. And this is another part of the elites bought off. And so the media is spinning the Russian narrative, which is ridiculous. This is about the Chinese Communist Party. And you're seeing now they're going to have to come to grips with the fact there's no hack material here. This comes off a hard drive. So you've got the emails from Hunter Biden's lawyer saying, can we have that hard drive back? What, what date are those emails? It's, it's, it's basically, I think it's Thursdays, the day that we were coming out with the first story in the New York Post. It might have been Wednesday. So it's the night before we came out with the first story. I think because the New York Post went to them for comment and said, hey, we've got these emails. And they saw the emails and they, and they went, oh, my God, look what they've got. They, they have the real emails of us setting up these deals. They panicked. And when he panicked, what he did is started the call. I'm sure that Hunter... You know, the Biden campaign lit, I'm sure they lit Hunter up. Like, what happened here? How did these guys get your hard drive, get your computer? And 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 this is when the lawyer started calling around, and this is when he sent the emails. We just kind of sat on it because said, we want them to go more into the Russia thing. We, we want the mainstream media because it just brings out what liars they are. We have the emails from the lawyer. If we need to release them, we'll release them. Look, Steve Bannon, other media outlets are refusing to report this story, and when they do report it, they're, they're questioning, with, with no evidence for this, of course, they're questioning whether this was actually a hack of Hunter Biden's iCloud, and the information was then uploaded to a laptop. They point to the, the fact that they say there's no metadata attached to the emails. Uh, you know, when you first... Uh, heard about this when you were first contacted by Rudy Giuliani. Did you think this was possible, that this might not be Hunter Biden's laptop? It could have been, you know, a, a hack of his iCloud and then the data uploaded to the laptop by a foreign agent, which is what's being reported by the critics or the cynics of this. You know, did you consider that that, that was a possibility? This is a stupid defense. Absolutely. We went through all that. And more importantly, a, a company owned by Rupert Murdoch the lawyers in the company went through this substantially. The technicians went through it substantially. They've got the metadata. That's all nonsense. That's a bunch of guys in MSNBC and CNN trying to be the Praetorian Guard for the Biden for the Biden campaign. Of course, they saw the metadata. You think you think Rupert Murdoch's going to expose himself to lawsuits? And by the way, why hasn't the, why hasn't the Biden campaign sued uh, New York Post? Why haven't they sued him? Why haven't they tried to stop it? You know why? Because the countersuit that they would get would in discovery would expose everything. The, the Biden campaign, the Biden campaign hasn't done anything here because they know those are the emails. We got it from the lawyer that it's a hard drive. It wasn't uploaded and any single email was dropped in here. Oh, the bad thing was really placed in here. That's nonsense. We've even seen that some Republicans have come out to question uh, what, what they say is the unlikeliness of the repairman story uh, that, that Hunter Biden, you know, forgot to pick his laptops up from a repairman. And they say that the timing of this is all too convenient with Biden so far ahead in the polls. What's your response to this? You know, did you have early concerns about the fact that Hunter Biden might have forgotten to pick up uh, water damaged laptops from a repairman? And, and how did you satisfy yourself that that this was what happened? Here's how I satisfy myself. His 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 lawyer, Mesries from Chicago, one of the top lawyers in the country, emailed us and said, I've just and, and we had the email. He called, he called the repair shop. He sent us an email, or he sent the repair shop an email that he sent us right away saying, I gotta get Hunter's, I you know, Hunter dropped these off at the same day he talked about, he forgot to pick them up. I gotta get them right away. What have you done with them? Right. That's an email and a phone conversation he had at the repair shop. Everything about that's a lie. OK, it's just it's not like somebody's misreading. It's a lie. It's a lie. This repairman, when the when the when the 
when he didn't come back, it's a abandoned property by law in Delaware if you don't come back in 90 days. He went to the FBI and gave them to the FBI. We got them much later. But the question for us is why has the FBI, why did the FBI not move on this immediately? When the FBI got it, two things would have happened. This was back in the fall or November, December of 2019. Number one, Donald Trump would have never been impeached. If you get the information out of this lab, there's no impeachment trial. And therefore, we could have focused on the Chinese Communist Party plague. We could have focused on the pandemic instead of worrying about the impeachment, number one. Number two, Bernie Sanders would have been the Democratic nominee if any of this information had come out. And by the way, there's much more horrible information. There's really horrible information that's about to come out. But if any of this information had come out at the time, Joe Biden had been finished in the Democratic primary, finished. So once again, the FBI has protected the neoliberal neocon candidate. They protected Hillary Clinton in 16 and Bernie Sanders lost. They protected Joe Biden in 20 and Bernie Sanders lost. So it just shows you the corruption of our institutions here in the United States. It doesn't matter who you change out. They're rotten to their core. The FBI, to me, I say very simply, the president of the United States ought to call in the FBI director uh, tomorrow into the Oval Office. And he ought to sit there with Barr on one side and Senator Johnson on the other, who ran the committee, who never got the hard drive from the FBI. He ought to ask Chris Ray about 10 questions. And if Chris Ray does not have a good reason, not an excuse, but a good reason why this wasn't given to Ron Johnson's committee immediately, why Barr didn't know about it, why even the president wasn't made aware of this, okay? Why wasn't the media contacted, right? Why wasn't the Bernie Sanders campaign contacted? If Ray doesn't have great answers for that, one year, basically close to a year after the FBI got it, he should be fired in the office. He should not walk out of there as FBI director. It's time now to stop playing games with these people. It's enough of these Brennans and these Clappers and these Comeys, these, these terrible people that work against the interests of the American people and have their own Praetorian Guard that they're going to protect these hack, corrupt uh, politicians of both parties. Not just any party, but both parties. But both these neoliberal neocons that are Wall Street's candidates. Just like Biden is and just like Hillary Clinton, they ought to be fired. He ought to be fired on the spot.